Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. We've got another great guest here today. Recent Hall of Famer 2021 from Bishop Gibbons in the Legends Division, the one and the only Bob Akins. Bob, good to see you. How's things uh, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina today? Uh, things in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina are absolutely incredible. The only thing bad about today is that it's uh, only about 50 degrees right now, so it's a little chilly for down here. But that's all right. It's sunny. It's always good when it's sunny, and it's a sunny day, and, and we're glad to have you here today. You grew up in North Tonawanda. Talk about your uh, upbringing in North Tonawanda, um, the good, maybe the good, the bad, or, or anything else that you want to talk about regarding that. All right. Well, golly, <laughs> I don't know where to start with that. You know, I hung out with uh, the Cox brothers and uh, the Hlinsky guys and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we used to have a gang of guys that would roam around North Tonawana when we were 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. We'd play pickup baseball all the time. Every, every Saturday morning, we'd go to Riviera Theater, sit in the balcony and, you know, be very bad boys at our, at our age. But, you know, we had a lot of fun and... What we didn't do, we were never, you know, for lack of a better word, mean or anything like that. I mean, we just had fun. We weren't afraid of anybody. We never locked the doors in North Carolina. You know, never. We left at 8 o'clock in the morning, came back at 9 o'clock at night, and we just hung around all day. Uh, I was raised in a typical Irish Catholic family. I think you might know what that might mean. I'm, you know, I don't want to get into all the uh, <laughs> particulars about my childhood. Let's just say it was different. Uh, and that was one of the motivating factors for me to eventually get into uh, sports was the uh, imperative to try to strengthen myself so that I could deal with some issues that would periodically pop up in my home life. Um, I had a great childhood. I had an experience for a background and history that probably most children don't face, but you know, it was a learning experience for me and it helped me through the rest of my life. And it taught me things that I wanted to do and taught me a few things that I didn't want to do. And, you know, through that, you know, life goes on and you do the best you can, but you all in all it was great. You grew up in a couple parts of, of North Tonawanda. You went over to, you went to St. Joseph school and you also I went did. to Ascension school, which is, both sides of the, uh, both sides of the town. So I, I'm sure you had uh, made friends with uh, a lot of different uh, characters and individuals during that time. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did actually. I, I, I was born in Buffalo on Locust Street, which is you know the fruit belt in Buffalo, and that was you know way back when in '48 and stuff like that. And we moved when I was six. We moved to Payne Avenue, 1200 Payne Avenue, and. Uh, that's when I went to St. Joseph. I only went for two years to St. Joseph. And then we moved to Ganson Street, which I don't know if you're familiar with that is, but it's right around the corner where Thompson Street is and Shank Street and stuff like that. And uh, then I went to Ascension and was taught by the Sisters of St. Joseph and the very, very kind uh, priest in the Catholic Church back then. And I was an altar boy, so I went through all the uh, mayhem with that. And uh, unfortunately for me, when I went to Catholic schools, I wasn't probably the best behaved uh, young, young man going. And uh, the nuns <clears throat> were aware of my, you know, my particular uh, behavioral habits. So they, uh, they tried to uh, have a strong influence on my life in a positive way. <laughs> so I, many a days I was, uh, you know, I was introduced to the the runners in a Catholic school and introduced to uh, the book holding and stuff like that. And that was only because I was a, for, you know, for lack of a better word, I, I needed the discipline. So they were more than gracious to give it to me. Was and, that, uh, was it important in, for your family that you'd continue with a Catholic education from uh, kindergarten all the way to high school? Or was there ever any consideration of going to North Anawanda High School? No, there never was. Uh, I think my mother, when I was younger, decided that that was uh, an important thing that needed to be done with me, only because I wasn't, you know, 
I wasn't getting that much structure at home because of certain things. So I think she thought that I needed that structure in school. And uh, looking back, I definitely did. Uh, you know, it, um, it taught me a lot of philosophical points, for lack of a better word, that I still carry today. You know, and uh, I wish I would have been a behave, better behaved student only because I wish I would have concentrated better on my schoolwork and stuff like that, because I think that would have made my life a lot easier as I got older. But again, hindsight's, you know, hindsight's hindsight. How, how, how much encouragement did you uh, get from home to uh, participate in uh, athletics? <laughs> Honestly, uh, none. Uh, that was something I decided to do on my own. Sports was never a big thing in my family. In fact, you know, I'm the first first and only one that went to the Catholic school, was the first and only one that went to college and this kind of thing. So uh, most of this was, you know, some decisions that I made predicated again on, you know, certain things in my life. And, um, you know, it was a decision that I was happy I made. I mean, let me back up a little bit. When we were kids, all we did was play sports. I mean, you know, we had pickup baseball games all the time. I used to play fast, fast uh, pitch with the Cox brothers on the back of the uh, Ascension Church and stuff like that. So, I mean, sports, we did sports all the time, but we did unorganized sports, you know, but we did sports, you know, you know, the Cox brothers, they're, they're very sporty. <laughs> so we Is had, it safe, you know, was it safe to assume that baseball was your first love as, as a sport? It was, you know, I, I, made the all-star team of Little League Baseball when I was 12. I made the newspapers because when I was in the batter's box, I was swinging and winding up and I ended up whacking the photographer in the head. So, you know, I, um, yeah, it was. And I was back then, I was considered a home run hitter because I had like nine home runs in the Little League. So I was a, I was a minor big shot. <laughs> and um, so that was cool. And that was some of the, you know, all these things, uh, I guess, in total kind of have a had an influence on my life but yeah yeah and you know they would go watch the games and stuff like that but uh yeah baseball was my thing until i got 14 13 or 14 i found an old 12 pound uh bowling ball and i used that i went in the backyard and started tossing the bowling ball like a shot put and i did that for a couple of years made these ginormous uh, craters in my backyard. But I, then I got a love for, uh, for track, for shot put and discusing, you know, throwing, stuff like that. And uh, I still remember that. I remember I thought I was a little goofy tossing the, the bowling ball, but, you know, that's what I did. You know, and... Well, um, question for you. Uh, Stature-wise, were you a bigger child compared to um, other kids of your age? When I was in eighth grade, I was a big old fat thing. I weighed, uh, I was uh, 180 pounds back then and about, you know, 5'10", 5'11". So I was fairly, uh, fairly large. And that was because my mother would always feed me uh, bologna sandwiches with white bread. So I had, <laughs> I had a lot of that. And we would always, when we were in uh, 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 Ascension School, during lunchtime, we'd sneak over to Gersh's Dairy and have a hot fudge sundae. So between the bologna sandwiches and the hot fudge sundaes, I, you know, I, I was a feather, a rather large little young man. But, you know. <laughs> Your senior year, you played, you only played one year of football at Bishop Gibbons. Had quite the, quite, or, or you look like you're going to correct me. Go ahead. Well, I was, you know, that was one of these revisionist things. <laughs> I look back in my, uh at my uh, yearbook and lo and behold i did play my junior year too and i you know i was on the varsity team and stuff like that but i you know i'd be honest with you i, I completely forgot about that i thought i only played one year so that just shows you know brain cells are going quickly but you know yeah so i played my junior year too talk about your high school football experience at gibbons oh my gosh um I loved it. Um, Tommy Helensky, Tony Helensky, Rich Thomasini, and myself, we were gym rats for two years. We worked, we worked, 
We worked, we lifted weights, we lifted ourselves, we wrestled, we beat each other up. We did everything that we could to be as good as we could be in football. And we thought, we honestly thought we were the, the baddest dudes in town when it came to the football. We were all strong, you know, but, well, back then, relatively speaking, you know, I could bench 350, they could bench about 300 back then. They went on to college and ended up benching 460 when they were on the college football team were the strongest dudes on their, on their college football team. And I think it has a lot to do with the training that um, we instilled, I instilled, you know, whatever was the case back then. But we worked hard. And um, uh, football philosophy was very simple, you know, and, and our thinking was that it was, uh, it was a small war. We had a war with the guy in front of us. Everybody, if everybody had a war and won the, won the war, we won the game. And as far as we were concerned, we wanted to run the ball all the time. I mean, we just thought there wasn't anybody out there that could, uh, that could stand up with us. You know, unfortunately, that runs into all these other things about other players wanting to do other things. So, uh, but it was a great experience. We worked hard. Uh, I thought we had a fairly good team. It could have been a lot better, but, you know, it is what it was. But we did, you know. What do you recall about Coach Hank Lewis in those years? I, Hank Lewis, I thought, was a great guy. Um, he was always a very positive influence on uh, with me. He had really high expectations for me. He had high expectations for uh, Tony and Tommy, too. And... Um, you know, he, was, he did the best he could, too. I thought he was a good coach. I think, you know, I think that his personality was great. He was the AD back then, too. So uh, I I liked Henry a lot. I really did. I thought he was a good man. And I thought he was, a, you know, from my perspective, because I was, which is limited, but he, so uh, he was, I thought he was a good coach. Um I actually wish I could have kept up with Henry. I'm not sure what happened with Henry uh, as the years went by. You know, as the years went by. Um, um, but I liked him a lot. And I thought he was knowledgeable. What changed from you from your junior year playing high school to, to senior year? Uh, where I'm going with this is that you had a tremendous senior year named honorable mention all state as a, uh, on the line as a tackle and a defensive tackle. What changed for you that year? Mm. Well, attitude. I, you know, I really uh, thought that I was good. I'd be honest. I don't want to sound silly or anything like that, but I really had high expectations for myself. The first year, you know, it was kind of a learning experience. I, I was learning how to play football because I didn't really play a lot. I didn't play at the junior level or anything like that. And again, some of the reasons why I played football, uh, you know, were non-traditional. But um, yeah, the first year was learning. Second year, I knew what I was doing and I felt confident that I could do pretty much what I, what I wanted to do on the field. Um, <sighs> Plus the guys that were around me, you know, I had uh, these guys I worked out with. So I felt, you know, really comfortable with them. And we worked well as a unit, you know, and Tommy, you know, I thought Tommy was a good quarterback. And obviously Billy McCarthy was great, uh, great wide out. And Tony, you know, so we, we just had a good team and uh, we were, we were symbiotic with one another. What kind of regrets would you have from uh, your high school playing days? If you could go back and relive anything, what would you do? Oh, in my playing days, well, the biggest thing I would do would be uh, try to be better academically. You know, I um, I didn't put enough attention to that that I put on with uh, with my sports, with uh, football and track. You know, if I had uh, put that much focus on my schoolwork. I would have ended up probably going to college and playing football, but because the grades were low, you know, I got a, I got a couple look apps and stuff like that, but the grades just wouldn't support, you know, uh, giving me a scholarship and, you know, it was a different time than to with Vietnam and stuff like that. And, uh, um, but I just would, um, 
I would be, try to become a more rounded young man if I could have been back then. You know, after high school, after high school, you went to the service. You were in I Vietnam. Did. You were in Vietnam, but you were also became the heavyweight boxing champion for Fort Devens. Didn't know you had bo- <laughs> didn't know you had boxing in your um, in your background. You want to talk about that a little bit, or? Well, it's not that you know. Not that I had boxing background. Uh, I suppose I did to a certain extent, only because of the uh, need to learn how to do that. But uh, yeah, we were at Fort Devens. We had gone to Morse Code Interceptor School, which I passed, but I couldn't get my uh, top secret clearance for whatever reason. So they bumped me down to Radio Man after that. So I had, but while we were there, they had this boxing tournament, and three of us uh, entered, you know, just for the just for the heck of it. You know, I had two fights and then I won knockout both times and winning, you know, winning the, the title for what it was worth back then. And we did it a lot just to, to agitate the army, guys. <laughs> you know, agitate the army guys. You know, this is their base. This is their tournament. They all thought they were, you know, big shots. So we just want to little, introduce a little bit of Marine Corpsism to them and teach them a little lesson. So we did. We had a good time. You know, it was just a, it was a pleasant surprise. And, uh, you know, I did it for that short period of time. I don't think I'd want to do it as a living because, you know, it hurts a little bit too much and you get whacked in the face. But, you know, it was cool. We liked it. How much active duty did you, uh, were you involved with in Vietnam? Well, I spent three years in the Marine Corps. I spent 13 months in Vietnam. Uh, I was, since I was in the Marine Corps, we went to I-Corps, which is the, uh, top zone in, the, in Vietnam. Um, you know, I was at all the famous places I got. I was in Contien, Julian, and L.D. Shepard, and Camp Carroll, and I was involved in the case on relief and stuff like that. So it was a, it was a, it was a very trying 13 months, let's put it that way. Um, it was something I'll never forget, you know, obviously, Warfare is a very unnatural uh, activity, so you don't you don't forget. Nobody who's been in the, in the service forgets any of that nonsense. Um, one of the lessons I learned after that was when I got out, when I had children, guns. I never let my son play with guns because I never thought guns were toys, and I didn't want him to learn that it was fun to point a rifle at a, you know at anybody. So, and even to this day, you know, I don't uh, I don't have a gun collection. I don't have a gun. I just I don't believe in them. Oh, I know. You know, from my experience, all the hours bad things, not good things. You became a fifth uh, degree uh, red belt in, in Taekwondo. Were you involved in the martial arts when you were in high school as well, or was it something afterwards? No, that's something. That's something I did when I was forty years old. I decided I needed a challenge. It's like uh, <laughs> Tony with his unicycle. I, I decided to take up martial arts at forty just to see uh, if I could do it, A, B, you know, try to bring out some of this Marine Corps stuff in a, in a martial arts environment. And um, I'd be honest with you, I got up to fifth degree red. I was getting ready to take my black belt exam, but I couldn't do the kick. They have very unusual kicks. The, the black belt kick was a flying spin back kick and you had to jump over like four guys that were in front of you so I had to try to jump about four and a half five feet up and about 15 feet laterally and I my old 43 year old legs and body wouldn't I couldn't do it so if I couldn't do it I couldn't pass the exam hey I want, to, I want to backtrack a little bit back to your given stays um you were quite the baseball player the home run hitter when in your youth but then you took up track in high school. Why not add baseball to it like some of the other athletes like Phil McCarthy played four sports? Why not uh, be football, baseball, and track? Well, it's a good question because I did occasionally, uh, you know, swing the bat when uh, they were practicing and stuff like that. I got in a lot of trouble actually doing it. I, I, I bounced a couple of uh, home runs off the awnings at the uh, priest's home. So I got, you know, I got in ditch with that. Um, I don't know. I, track was a really consuming thing for me because it involved, you know, again, the weightlifting and, 
you know, uh, I've re the thing I regret about track was that I think if I would have had a, a coach in track, a good coach who was involved in field, you know, field events, I didn't have a field event coach, but that's because, you know, small school. Uh, I could have done, gone even, uh, been better than I was because I basically muscled everything. I muscled the, the shot put, muscled the discus. The forms were hideous back then, but, you know, I was good enough, you know, again, I don't want to be tooting my horn, but, you know, I was all Catholic two years in a row in both sports. So, I mean, I was, I, when I did it, I was good at it. It's just, uh, I think it could have been better, but, you know, I was good enough. And I, I enjoyed it a lot. I really did. I wasn't a runner, but I, you know, I, I, I run like an elephant, but I, uh, I could do the field events good. And again, Tommy, Tommy and Tony were out there and Richie, all three of them, they, they tried to, you know, they tried with the shot put and stuff like that too. And um, I was kind of, I don't want to say a mentor, but I, you know, I, I work with these guys a lot as far as trying to get them stronger and, uh, you know, help them with their te technique and stuff like that. You know, they were, they were brainiacs. They were, they were really smart. And uh, I suppose, you know, uh, I was hoping maybe some of that would have rubbed off, <laughs> rubbed off on me a little bit, but they were great guys. And, uh, you know, they were also, they were good listeners, you know, they did well when they went farther on and I'm uh, really proud of them. In fact, I think, I think Tony should be in the hall, but I, you know, that's a different, a different time and a different, uh, you know, battle. How close are you to uh, some of your high school friends from Gibbons? Well, I still uh, see Bob Cox whenever I go back to the house. I, he, he was my friend since uh, I was 12 years old. So, uh, you know, that's 60, almost 62 years now. And I see uh, uh, Pat Cox too occasionally, then Mike. Uh, I see Richie occasionally. Um, yeah, um, it's like it's like anything else. You these are friends you made when you were younger, so you could go back, not seeing them for five years. You just pick up where you left off. You know, so these are guys that they'll be with you for the rest of your life, even if you only see them periodically. I still consider them all my friends. When you go back to North Tonawanda and you see St. Joseph is closed and Ascension is closed and Bishop Gibbons is closed, what goes through your mind? Ah, it's, really, it's really sad. It really is. Um, you know, I'm not sure of the dynamics as to why. I know part of it is because uh, the cost and stuff like that. And I know when I went to Ascension, Father Hunt was the old priest then, and it was his dream to open up a Catholic high school. So however they generated the funds to, to open it, you know, for Bishop Gibbons, it was a big deal. And I remember when I uh, went to school there, it was like $90 a year. So, uh, you know, that's probably one of the reasons why they closed down. They couldn't support it anymore. And the diocese, I know they didn't have the funds to throw into it. So, and they couldn't, you couldn't really ask for too much tuition back then because North Tonawanda back then was a working class town. So they didn't have that much money. It's sad though. It really is because it's part of uh, American history. It's part of the West New York history. And it's uh, something that um, I think is sorely lacking. I, I personally think that we need a little more discipline in, you know, in our culture right now, but that's for another, another day. The Bishop Gibbons committee got together and decided uh, we're going to put three people in, in the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame, the Legends Division. And your name came up along with Billy McCarthy and, and Dennis Wynecki and, and several others. Um, there was a lot of discussion amongst different players. How do you feel that they, they chose you as one of the three for this year? Well, I can't even begin to tell you how honored I feel. Um, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a huge thrill. It's something that I'll obviously we'll never forget. And um, I, I've had a chance to talk to most of the guys and, uh, you know, I, th I, I actually thank them all because um, it's just, it's a, um, it makes you feel like all the work you did back then was recognized which it was, but they were all, 
it's just, you know, it's, it's almost hard to describe, but it's something that um, I'll never forget. And I look forward to the next meeting to go back there and to uh, see some of the guys again and to uh, thank everybody again. I can never not thank them enough for the honor because, and I, and it was also because I like to think that, uh, you know, Tommy and Tony and, and Richie, they had a lot to do with this too. I wish I could, uh, you know, give them all a little plaque because it was because of the four of us working together that made me what I, what I was that short period of time. So I'm, uh, I owe a lot of people a lot. And all I can say is thank you. I mean, really, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hall of Fame weekend. You get to go on the field and be announced in, in front of the North Tonawana crowd at, at the stadium there. Then we have the dinner there. What were your thoughts for that weekend? Oh, my gosh, almighty. It was really cool. I was hoping, I was actually hoping my daughter could have come. She was thinking about coming from, uh, from Maine, but she couldn't uh, get the flight. So I took my sister, and, it, and my sister actually thought it was pretty cool because uh, she... You know, she was happy for me and stuff like that. But as far as getting back out in the field and seeing the guys and going to the, you know, the dinner and stuff like that, top notch. I mean, really, it was a, it was a thrill of a lifetime. Everybody was marvelous. I didn't think I was going to have to speak, so when I went up there, you know, I was like having a little, you know, a little thing in my throat because uh, I'm not necessarily the greatest public speaker, uh, but. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was put on, you guys did such a magnificent job putting it together. I mean, so it was a, it was a top notch event and I was honored to be part of it. And uh, I hope in the future, if there's anything that the North San Juan Football Hall of Fame needs from me, all they got to do is call. You know, I'll be glad to help them in any way that I can. Because, uh, you know, I've, I'm just uh, eternally grateful. I really we've, am. We've talked about a lot of different subjects here. What's something what we haven't talked about that you'd like to talk about? Hmm. That I haven't talked about. Does it have to be sports? <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're getting back to your high school career. You know, what sticks out in your mind that Maybe it was it very influential for you or, you know, a person or, or a situation uh, that we neglected to talk about. Or maybe you have a, a funny anecdotal story. story. Well, <clears throat> let me tell you, you know, when I was in my senior year, they had an award at Bishop Gimmons. It was like the Athlete of the Year Award, that kind of thing. And I won it. You know, I, and I never thought in the highest heavens that I would win it because, you know, again, academics were just not very good. You know, I actually thought Tommy or Billy would win it because they were top-notch athletes and they were also top-notch uh, students. So, I, you know, I wanted to, I guess I wanted just because I was all Catholic in sports, that kind of thing, I don't know. But anyways, that that threw me for a, a big time loop and I was, uh, I was shocked by it. So where am I going with that? I guess what I'm going is that, um, I wish, I wish I would have paid more mind and more attention to the things that probably are most important when you go to high school. And I try to teach that with my grandchildren and stuff like that right now, you know, that, uh, school, 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 Find something that you're passionate about. You know, my passion back then would have been to be a, uh, a phys ed teacher in AD like Tommy Sarkovitz was. And to me, he had, you know, he had the best job in the universe from my point of view because he was doing things he loved and he was in the sports field and stuff like that. And I would have loved to have done that. But, you know, um, it wasn't meant to be. So what was meant to be was... Uh, Got to ask you your opinion on this. Your Gibbons teams against North Tonawanda teams at that point. How would, how would have you guys uh, fared against uh, the Lumberjacks? <clears throat> well, I think it would have been a good game. 
I uh, I can't remember the quality of the top North Tonawanda team back in the 65, but I think man for man, I think we were just as good. I don't know. Uh, I like to think we could have we could have uh, had a good game with them. I think uh, I would look forward to that because again, for me, it was just a mono mono thing. So. Uh, you know, I don't know who played uh, defensive tackle back then, but I would like I would like to butt heads with him, but uh, wasn't meant to be. But anyways, you know, it was fun. Bob Akins, I appreciate you very much for joining me today. Uh, thank you so much for your insight. Congratulations on becoming a Hall of Famer of the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame. Be well and take care of yourself. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your time, and uh, it was good seeing you. And I hope I see you again soon.